Hi there, I'm Arturo. Today I want to talk to you about trans farming. That's the process of transforming a backyard into a farmyard. A few years ago, I was uh, watering my raised bed gardens. It was 100 and plus degrees outside. We were in the middle of a drought, as many, much of uh, America is. And I was watering my gardens three times a day. And I was in the morning and in the, after, in the evening. In the middle of the day, I'd be out there just watering my tomatoes. And they weren't, wasn't producing any tomatoes. I was just keeping the plant alive. So I'm standing there thinking, well, you know, this really isn't sustainable. If we had a water main break or any problem, uh, I'd be dead in the water if I, was count if I was depending on my gardens to feed my family. So I remember walking over to the, the faucet and I turned the water off and I walked over to the aquaponics system and it was doing great. The fish were hydrated, the plants were hydrated, everybody was happy and I walked away going like, well, this is the solution, I'm okay. But then it occurred to me, you can lose all your fish. You can, your, your aquaponics system goes south just like everything else. So I kind of walked away thinking, well, what's the solution? And so I sat down on the porch and I remember thinking, well, what is the solution? And I started thinking about it and I said, wait a minute, what did the pioneers do? We're here, they did something right. And as I thought it through, I realized it was backup and redundancy is what they had. They didn't re rely on just one component to grow all their food. They had a lot of different things they did to grow food. And that included storage and cellars and chickens and goats and rabbits and all kinds of other things. So that's what started the whole concept of trans farming, transforming your backyard into a farmyard. So how does it work? It's, it's, a, it's a, a series of components that make up a personal clean food growing system. The system, for example, uh, on mine, uh, consists of an aquaponic system, for starters. Also, uh, and that's, that's a wonderful way to grow food on any level. Uh, it's, it's not completely sustainable, but it's very close. Uh, another component could be a wicking bed, which is a wonderful way to grow food and conserve water. It's uh, basically a res bed with, a, with an aquifer underneath. Uh, and we have many, many instructions on that. Just click the module below, the link below. And we have um, maybe a keyhole garden. Uh, that's another way to grow conserve water. Uh, we have tank gardens and we have rabbits and we have all kinds of wonderful things that work together. So we've got backup in case one system goes down and then we've got redundancy because we're growing food in a lot of different ways because some plants grow better in a hula, on a hula culture, perhaps, uh, which is another component, or in the wicking bed or in the aquaponics. So let, let's see how, let's kind of uh, describe how this might work together. So my wicking bed, when I water those, I use the water from the aquaponics system. That's nutrient rich water and those fish are fertilizing that every day, every minute of the day it's getting fertilized. I use that in my wicking bed. So that supports the wicking bed. When, I, uh, when a fish dies, I'll take that fish and I'll, I'll bury him in the garden, give him a little ceremonial burying under a stalk of corn or something and that just fertilize, wonderful fertilizer out there. When I trim my, my, uh, my tomatoes or any of my plants, my basil, uh, that goes to my rabbit. My rabbit eats that it does its business on the garden and that's wonderful. That manure is wonderful fertilizer because A, it's clean, B, it's, it's vegetable based, and C, it's not hot, meaning there's not too much ammonia in it, as opposed to chickens. Now I give the chickens cuttings also and uh, they, they'll eat fish, they'll eat worms, they'll eat your cuttings, they'll eat your compost. Chickens will eat just about anything. And those chickens, they too produce waste but their waste is, is what's called hot, meaning you can't put it directly in the soil, but they do their business uh, on the hay. And I use that hay around the fruit trees because that becomes wonderful mulch and wonderful fertilizer uh, for, the, for, the, for the fruit trees. So everything's supporting everything else. What, what compost they don't get or the rabbit doesn't get goes into the worm motel. A worm motel is this really incredible little feature that goes in the wicking bed. It's basically a five gallon bucket with holes around the bottom and you throw your compost in there and the worms go in there and eat the compost, then at night they go out, there's holes inside, and they party in the bed and they come back. And again, if you want instructions on that, click the link below. And so worms are, are just fantastic for a transformed garden. Uh, the, the fish love them, the gardens love them, and the chickens love the worms. So a, a vermiculture bin of some kind or some kind of worm growing component is really an integral part to a, a really healthy trans farming system.